co-producers is Kristen Brindley. I'm here with the wonderful David Gatson. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thanks for having me. My goodness, I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, and you're on our cover of February. If you guys haven't checked it out, make sure you do. And um, David, I love I loved your story and I love how you feel about service and helping others. And uh, you and uh, the, your team, the David and Mandy team, really did, what, $263 million last year in business. Um, yeah. have about 12 producing agents doing that. That is uh, a massive amount of business. But I love how you don't really talk about that. You talk about serving people. And you know, normally I, I ask why real estate first, but I'd like to ask you, like, you know, what are you focused on this year um, and moving forward? you know, right now, like because of pandemic and all the things going on? I mean, I think <clears throat> for me, I'm not as focused. I mean, business is obviously a really important part, but I think for me, I'm just trying to, I want to emerge from the pandemic and I want to just carry forward the lessons that the last two years have sort of taught us in terms of, you know, kindness and keeping people close to us that, you know, boost us up and, and you know, sort of, exhibiting as much empathy as you can and understanding for other people. I think that we need that more in the world today, more than ever. And I, and I want that to be sort of my, that's what I really want to accomplish in the next couple of years. That is beautiful. Why real estate? So how, how'd you end up in real estate and <clears throat> yeah, how'd, how'd this crazy journey happen? Well, I mean, I got into real estate because I went on, I wanted to date somebody that was taking real estate classes. And so I just went to real estate class. I think that actually might be in the article, yep. um, <laughs> but I, I do it because I love to help people. Um, I mean, I think real estate is a byproduct of, of other things that are happening in other people's lives. And so to get to be a part of that in some way is really, really important um, and, and, you know, it's like they get to go through the thing and then you're sort of in the background helping make things happen. And I also enjoy that role a lot. That's beautiful. What has been uh, most challenging, you know, as a realtor, like maybe as a realtor and as a team lead, because you, lead I mean, people. time management is always the most challenging thing. I think that any real estate agent experiences period. I think it's really, really hard to be all things to all people at all times, um, and I think that that is why there are so many real estate agents that are divorced. <laughs> that that might be, it might be higher than the average, yes. <laughs> it, just, it just seems time management is a really important component of real estate for sure. Absolutely. What about for leading a team? What would you say has been the most challenging for? I mean, I think that leading our team, you know, is challenging because everybody is at sort of a different spot in their career. And so sort of figuring out how to have a cohesive team that addresses where everybody is in their career continuum is really, really, that is a really big challenge. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's a really big challenge. That, that makes a lot of sense. I, you know, Darren Hardy, I was just oh, uh, in the hero's journey, really, you know, listening about the six generations in the workforce right now too. It's a record breaking time for all of that. So that's, I find that to be a challenge. What's been most rewarding for you? <clears throat> oh, gosh. Um, I mean, it's really just like, like it all goes sort of back to helping the helping people achieve their goals. You know, I mean, I think that or or get out of situations. I mean, the, one of the most rewarding experiences I ever had was um, I helped sell this like two hundred and sixty thousand dollar condo and the people had lost their daughter. And the bank was continually sending notices like you were going to foreclose on you. You're a terrible person you need to make good on your, you know, mortgage, this, that, and the other. And so it was just a constant, and the mail was obviously forwarded to them. So it was just a constant reminder for them, like of the loss that they experienced. And so they contacted us and then we went in and got the property ready and we were able to get it sold for them and sort of help fund some money to the estate in order to just help with the situation. I think that it had been sort of in probate because she, the, the person that owned the condo had died very young. And so I don't think that she even had a will. And so 
it took a year or so, I think, to get through everything. And so it just was, I was really, ben it was really important to help these folks and it felt really, really good. So it wasn't a lot of money, but it was definitely a high, it was a high volume in terms of like feel good. Love that. Um, what about how does real estate fit in your, your dreams and your goals? I think it just checks a, it checks a lot of boxes in terms of being able to help people. I, sometimes I think like, what would I do if I wasn't a real estate agent? And I was like, oh, maybe I'd be a nurse. Um, I don't think I'd want to be a doctor, but I think I would definitely, you know, maybe be a nurse, but it's just the, it checks all the boxes really in terms of, um, in terms of helping people. Um, define success for us. Oh, I mean, a success means living a rich, full, rewarding life. And whatever that means to that person, right? And that's, yeah, it's whatever it means to that person. It's funny because I learned that I was in therapy about a year or two ago, maybe three now or four, gosh, anyway, a while ago. And, um, when I talked to the therapist, I was like, oh, you know, I, I'm trying, I'm here. She's like, you know, what are you trying to, why are you here? And I'm like, oh, I'm trying, I'm here because I'm trying to be, you know, figure out how to be happier. And she's like, well, you, happiness isn't real. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And she's like, well, happiness is a feeling. It's not like, it's not, it's not you, like you, if you're looking to be happy all of the time, you should just leave now because that's just not a possible thing. And then we just started talking more about like, about life and 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 the goal is to have a rich, full, and rewarding life, not necessarily to be happiness. Happiness, I think, is a byproduct of those other things. Uh, I was listening to something this morning on with stoicism and uh, I, everything that I was listening to this morning actually agrees with everything you just said. Um, yeah. tell, tell us about your family. Um, you know. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I'm a local kid. I grew up in the area. Um, my parents owned their own business. They had a heating and air conditioning company. So I've watched, you know, my entrepreneur parents sort of work in an entrepreneurial aspect my entire life. So I feel like in some respects, I was you know, raised to be an entrepreneur. That's, that's amazing. I'm, I'm hoping my daughter, you know, follows in the track too, personally. What are you, what are you currently learning? Um, I mean, <clears throat> I don't think I'm learning any one specific thing. I think that, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I, I think every day is a, essentially a learning experience, you know? <laughs> I, yeah. Is, uh, yeah. Is there, are there any books or topics or anything like that that you're, or any classes you'd recommend, um, for, for agents or what other real producers should do? I mean, so I, it's so funny you should say that. So like, I think that the word, so I'm going to just answer this in a completely convoluted way, but um, <laughs> I think the word should needs to be eliminated from everybody's lexicon because I, I feel personally, when you start to get into the shoulds, it becomes almost like a comparative thing, especially for real estate agents. Because right now I could give you probably a list of 20 things that I should be doing, or I should be focusing on, or I should and I find that when you focus on the shoulds, like all it does is it's, it's, it, it sets you up to, to focus on the things that you're not accomplishing and not doing rather than sort of having the mindset of what it is that you are accomplishing and what you are doing. And so I try to just avoid should. And, and I think that people just personally, I think people get into a lot of trouble with should because it's like, well, I should be married by X or I should have Y, you know, this thing by Y or you know, it gets into this whole sort of mental setup of things that, <clears throat> you know, it's that are arbitrary as to why you think that they should be a certain way. And so I try to just avoid all of that. I really like that answer. Um, <laughs> focusing on the, uh, on the gain, you know, like what are we gaining not on the, on the gap itself, but the gain, um, yeah. is, you know, positive psychology and, <laughs> Um, not comparative. Uh, yeah, it's really hard. I mean, that's the thing about social media that makes it so challenging. I mean, I'm, I'm not a big social media person um, in general, which, you know, there's that part of me that's like, oh gosh, I should be because I'm this realtor, blah, blah, blah. But then I, I started just, you have to do what you think is best for yourself. And you have to do what you think, you have to focus on the things that are meaningful to you. And at the moment, sort of social media isn't, a meaningful thing to me, the comparativeness within it is really, really 
you know, challenging. I mean, there's, there's, there's agents that will post things about like their own volume. And I'm like, oh my God, I should, I should do more, you know, like, and I just have to really erase that mindset, you know, and and be happy with where I am. I try to avoid should, I really do. And I try to avoid it for other people too. I try to say, well, I try not to say, well, you know, you know, Kristen, you should talk to this person, but I, I will say, you know, I try to, I try to say it in a different way without the word should I say, you know, oh, you might benefit from hearing what this person has to say about this or, oh, this, there's a unique take on this thing. So it might be worthwhile to hear what this person has to say, rather than saying you should do this thing. I, that's great. Um, what do you have a favorite quote or mantra? Um, and yeah. Yeah, that's funny. I, um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I, it's, I, I've, I probably have a million of them. I'm sure my team would be able to tell you. Um, as I reflected on that, uh, <laughs> one of the things that I really like to say, I say it all the time, um, is I like to say, it's your movie. You get to decide whether it's a comedy, a drama, or a horror. And, and, I, and I think I try to remember that. And I try whenever I talk to people about what it is that <clears throat> they're, they want to accomplish or whatever they're trying to accomplish, I, I try to just tell, I, I mean, I use those words all the time. It's, it's their story. They can write it to be whatever they want it to be sort of outside of like, you know, killing themselves or killing someone else, you know, there's, you know, like sort of outside of that, it's basically, you know, you can be or do anything that you set your mind to if you apply yourself. I, I imagine, I think that. I, I believe that pretty, um, pretty hardcore personally myself. I, uh, I believe everything happens like in our mind before it happens in reality. Um, and so whatever you decide to do, you should like the intention you were talking about earlier about being intentional. Um, I, I think that's a key portion of, of everything and success, especially, um, and the successful people I get to interview like yourself, um, <laughs> You know, tend to be a little bit more, a little bit more intentional. Um, what do you think uh, sets you apart or makes you different, David? Oh, I mean, I, <clears throat> I mean, I think I have just a huge capacity for care. Um, and I, I, I care so intensely about what happens to sort of everybody and everything. I mean, we we live in this crazy tumultuous world at the moment, and I, you know, I, I mean, like you know, what's happening in the Ukraine pulls at my heartstrings and, you know, that probably the Russian people don't entirely understand what's happening because of media control and sort of all the issues with, you know, civil unrest and, and all those sorts of things are all things that I worry about and care about. And, um, and, you know, and it, it could be a big problem like that, or it could be, oh my gosh, the anti-tip bracket isn't on the stove and we need to deal with it in this home inspection. I just really worry about making sure that, you know, I try to, I try to make sure as much as possible that, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I, I just care. I just care intently. What do you think has been, um, the greatest lesson or what, what's the, um, the greatest failure or the biggest failure that you've learned from like how did how did that go and i feel like we learn the most from those things like the failures that we have you know yeah i mean there is no failure right there's only a success or there's only or there's a learning experience so i mean you know and and i mean there's like there's no fit you know as i was saying there's no failure that's sort of <clears throat> un, undoable you know so I mean, I've, I've definitely made mistakes. You know, I know nobody's perfect. I, I make them all the time. I probably just made one, one second ago. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm open to that and I understand that that's, the, that's part of the condition of being human. But I think that the goal is to, you know, is to focus on, on how to improve or how not to make a similar mistake or what could you do better? Um, I, I, I like to, I tell, I tell people I'm a kangaroo. I don't know if you know this, but <laughs> the kangaroo and the emu are on the Australian flag. They're part of their crest, their coat of arms. Um, and the reason why is because they're like the only two mammals that don't go backwards. They can't, they can't actually step backwards. They only can move forward. And I sort of envision myself as a kangaroo because I also just only really focus on moving forward. I'm reflective about what's happened and then I just pick up and continue to move along. And I mean, I think that that's part of the human condition, but I have a, a real mastery of that. 
That's a great focus and a great intention. What what would you like to be remembered for, David? <clears throat> I think I want to be remembered for being funny and for being kind. I mean, those are probably, you know, I, I want to, I mean, you know, I want to be remembered for hopefully inspiring people or making people's lives better, both like, you know, people that I'm close to and people that I serve. So those kinds of things. Do you have like a fun or hilarious story you'd like to tell or? I mean, I can tell you a really funny story. So I was pretty new in my career and um, I was driving this client around and she was like this cutest little like petite, like little tiny twig of a person, like this little tiny blonde girl. And we are on uh, 13th street going north and we're like crossing over you and we're like between maybe, um, I want to say like you and Belmont sort of just getting ready to go up the hill and it's just she and I in the car. And then all of a sudden, like I smell like the most noxious smell I've ever, like, I mean, it was just rancid and we both are sitting there and sort of in silence and like literally my tears like are starting to form in my eyes because it smells so bad. And then she just, she just looks over at me and then she goes, well, we both know it wasn't you. <laughs> and I, like, I was like, do you mind if I put the window down? <laughs> I mean, it was probably like one of those summer, it was probably like a hundred degrees, but it was, I was just like, I've got to put the window down, but I didn't do anything until she acknowledged it. I just kept driving. It was so funny. So funny. I mean, that was probably a thousand years ago too, but I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> that would be hard to forget. That's very funny. Um, <laughs> do you have um, do you have any like leadership tips or um, because you you and Mandy you um, successfully run you know a, a high powered team? Um, do you have any leadership tips or or things that you could recommend? I mean. It's the same tips that you probably use with the client, which is just to try to be a good listener. You know, I think that that is really essential and to try to meet people where they are and understand where it is that they're coming from. I mean, people are so complex, you know, it's, it's hard to, you, and you, a person can never know because we're shaped every day by the things that happen to us and the things that we think and the things that we feel and the experiences we have. And so it's impossible to sort of fully understand what a person is going through. But what we can try to do is try to meet them where they are. And I, you know, I think Mandy and I try to do that every day with our team. That is great. Well, we really appreciate um, you sharing your story with our people um, here at DC Metro Real Producers. And um, thanks for being on, David. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited about the organization. It's actually, I just, you know, feel like I've recently really gotten to know you guys. And it's, um, I really like what you guys are trying to accomplish and, you know, I went to the event um, and I thought that that was really fun and it's nice to meet the people that are the vendors that sponsor everything. So I thought it was great. I think it's a great organization. Thank you, David. I really yeah, do. You're yeah, you're, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you do a good job with it. You should be proud of yourself. Thank you.